that caused Mrs. Simpson to change her mind. Thank heavens for those telephone calls Wolf made to Berlin. How typical of the Fuhrer to be so strong and decisive. Here, the diary is infuriatingly vague as to precisely what action Hitler took to influence Mrs. Simpson's decision. Who were the mysterious figures seen visiting the villa in the south of France? Could they have been SS men sent on the orders of the Fuhrer? And did Edward ever find out that Hitler had played a role in his downfall? With Edward removed from the throne, Hitler could now look around for a weaker and more pliable figure. Showing remarkable political acumen, he settled on this man, Neville Chamberlain, then Chancellor of the Exchequer. In an armed and arming world, we couldn't be the only great country disarmed. We simply had to build our defence forces again, and we had to pay for it. It'll involve an expenditure of some hundreds of millions of pounds. Those hundreds of millions of pounds were not so easy to find. As British industry slumped and the Jarrow marchers descended on London, Hitler's approach was simple and direct. He secretly offered Chamberlain a loan of 200 million Reichsmarks. Chamberlain accepted. Hitler and Unity returned to Aspern House. Our mission has been successful, thanks to the ingenuity of the Fuhrer. The secret loan negotiated yesterday means that Wolf has got Chamberlain in his pocket. He says the umbrella is so weak-willed and pathetic, he's absolutely bound to become Prime Minister. Unity Mitford set up her camera to record this moment of triumph, a rather chilly champagne breakfast on the terrace. While Unity indulges in champagne, it's likely that Hitler is consuming his favourite drink of mineral water, or possibly carrot juice. But their time in England was drawing to a close. 17th of December. Written in haste, Lord T has been approached by agents of British intelligence. We must flee within the hour. I can't think who betrayed us. The only person to ask any prying questions here was a stupid little slut of a maid called Ethel something or other, and she scarcely has the brains to cut a slice of bread. Did Ethel Farnley really not remember seeing Unity and Hitler? I didn't know. Together, you mean? I'd have known Hitler, wouldn't I, if I'd seen him, wouldn't I? Tomorrow we return to Germany. Long live National Socialism. Long live the Fatherland. Heil Hitler. This is the last entry in Unity's diary. One remaining fragment of film shows Hitler in pensive mood. It's thought to be the only piece of film in existence which shows the Fuhrer picking his nose. Hitler's secret visit to England, concealed for so long from public knowledge, raises a host of profound political questions. But one question which can be answered is this. Why did Chamberlain agree to the German dismemberment of Czechoslovakia in 1938? Far from achieving the triumph he had claimed, it's now clear that Chamberlain was involved in a desperate attempt to prevent the secret loan of 1936 becoming public knowledge. Thus, Hitler was given the Sudetenland and Chamberlain was given a piece of paper. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. Latest electronic techniques reveal for the first time what was written on that paper. I owe you 20 million Reichmarks, N. Chamberlain. Danke, Adolf Hitler. On March the 24th of this year, Bob Haslam, Richard Seller and Ethel Farnley were convicted of fraud after selling to Thames TV a film archive which purported to show that Joseph Stalin had visited Blackpool in 1937. Was it in the real world or was it in a dream? Was it just a note in some eternal theme? You were there. Your 
your eyes look into mine and altered every word. The color of the whole world altered, false became true. My universe tumbled into the earth became heaven for you. Look into mine and follow.